Hi everybody. Today we are going to talk about in-text citation in APA 7th edition style. So we're going to start off, let's look at a reference citation. So this would be the citation you put in your references list at the end of your paper. This was a book that I looked at and read and got some ideas for my paper. So here's the basic in-text citation to this reference citation. Sometimes you'll hear this referred to as parenthetical citation as well. Okay, so here's this sentence. Historically, people in England began to introduce rational thought into their traditional supernatural conceptions to formulate the first of the four stages of doubt. Watson, 2005. Okay, so this sentence, this is in my own words, or I paraphrase this or whatever, but I still have to cite this to where I got this idea, because I didn't go to England to conduct this research. This person from this book, Watson, the idea came from him. Okay, so even though I wrote this in my own words, which really doesn't matter, it's still plagiarism if you don't cite it. I'm citing this at the end, Watson, 2005. That refers back to this, so that every time when I use another person's idea and I cite it, I don't have to put in this whole reference citation. If someone wants more details, they can look at this right here, go to my references list at the end of my paper, and they can see that the idea must have come from this work by Watson, published in 2005. Okay, that's really what this is. This is what parenthetical citation is. That's how you do it. I would recommend you have your reference citation set up first. Then this isn't that hard when you when you put these in. And there are other ways you could do this as well. Some people think that's too formal. I personally like that way because it's simpler, but some people like to do it like this. Watson, 2005, clearly explains this idea. So you could also, as long as you're letting us know where who's the author, that this idea came from, and if you can give us the year, then we could probably find it in your references list. So you could you could also do it that way. Okay, that was I was putting something in my own words. I was paraphrasing uh, direct quotations. Let's say you use a direct quote exactly as the author said it. If the quoted material is less than forty words, you can include the quote in a sentence like this. Okay. So I've got this statement that I took directly from this book. Now, I'm going to add something to kind of put this into context. Here's the phrase. Then I give uh, Watson the same book again, 2005 comma. Now with this, I'm going to list the page number of where the actual quote came from. And this is something really important I haven't been pointing out earlier. Look at where the period is. The period is always after the parenthesis. Let's go backwards a little bit here. Notice this. This is a big mistake people make. The sentence ends here, but if you're going to put parenthetical citation in, the period goes here, after the parenthesis. Okay, and there's there's one situation where that isn't the case, but generally speaking, you put the period after the parenthesis, not before. <clears throat> Let's go back forward. Notice that again. <clears throat> well, this this case is different because it's in the middle there. Okay, so in this case, we have the direct quote got the Watson 2005. This time we give a page number and uh, there's a period there. Okay, now if you're going to lose, use a large quote, if the quoted material is 40 words or more, then you will need to set it off with indentation like this. So if it's a really long quote that you're using, I'm going to introduce the quote first. Don't just throw the quote in there. Give us some context. Tell us what this is about. Okay, and then at the end of the sentence, I'm going to put a colon because that's introducing this quote. Then you notice this, it's block indented all the way over. You indent all of this. Also notice no quotation marks, okay? Then just as soon as you got used to everything, the period going at the end of the parentheses, in this case, this is the only exception that I know of, the period goes at the end of the long quote. Then you give us the parentheses page number again, but notice in this case, the period is here. So let's go back again. The period, generally speaking, in parenthetical in-text citation is going to go at the end of the parenthesis. But in this case, where it's a big quote, a large quote, the period is going to go at the end of the quote. And then you get the parenthesis, the year and the page number. Now, I will tell you for a student paper, which is what I'm really making this video for, for students, 
I would use these very sparingly, if at all. Check with your instructor. A lot of instructors don't like it when you put a lot of direct quotes in your paper, simply because look how big this is. A few of these quotes is going to start to take up a number of pages in your required 10 page assignment. So this is how you would do it. Just be very careful and make sure your instructor would accept a paper with that big of a quote in it. Okay, let's look at citing articles in text citation for works by multiple authors. When a work has two authors, cite both authors' names followed by the date of the publication every time you reference the work. Okay, so every time I cite this work by Jung and Newton, many therapy techniques are not built on evidence-based research. Okay, Jung and Newton, comma, 2009, period. Notice that ampersand. I'm not typing in and. Jung and Newton, comma, okay, and the period at the end. Okay, every time I cite them in my paper, that's how I'm going to do it. And there's no comma between the and and the other author. Okay. When a work has three or more authors, list only the first author's name followed by et al. every time you reference the work. So, if it, has, if it has three or more authors, more than two authors, list only the first author's name followed by et al. every time you reference the work. So, so that the citations don't, don't get too long, this is how we do it. Here's the sentence, okay? Here's the first author's name, et al. and this means and all the others. 2015. And when we, if, if the person goes to your reference list, they can get more information on who the other authors were. But to keep your paper from getting too long and too, too bogged down with long quotes, because sometimes you might have a paper here with 10 authors, that becomes a really long citation here, and it becomes longer than your sentence. So three or more, just give us the first author, then et al. Notice again, period at the end. Okay, if a work has a corporate author <clears throat> that has a name that can be abbreviated, list the full name of the organization the first time you cite it, and in future citations, abbreviate the organization's name, like this. Okay, health information is readily available online, National Library of Medicine, comma, 2020. That's the first time I'm citing them. But if I'm going to cite them over and over again in this paper, we'll, we'll know who National Library of Medicine is. We don't need to keep seeing this over and over again. But the first time, list out their first name, their full name. All future times that you reference them in this paper, just put an abbreviation, NLM 2020, but don't do it the first time. Okay. Now, this is a, this is a really big question that I, I get a lot. Indirect citations. I call these indirect citations. The APA manual refers to these as secondary sources. Okay. The author of the article you read quoted another author. You want to include a reference to this in your paper. Okay. Set up the citation with a signal phrase referring to the source your author was quoting from. Then cite the work you read that included this reference. Do not include citations to both works in your references list. So I'll explain this a little more when we see the example. Okay, so I read this article by Lachman. Now, Lachman didn't just write this article all from his own creativity or from his own research. He was looking at other authors' works as well. So, in Lachman's work, he quoted another work by this author whose last name is Miller. And I want to use it in my paper, okay? So, I'm including this quote from Miller. But I didn't read the book or the article by Miller. I read the work by Lachman, and Lachman quoted this person. Now, first off, I don't have to go out and read this whole work by Miller. I'm just quoting this one section that Lachman talked about. And I don't have to put reference citations for both of these works. I'm just going to put the reference citation to Lachman. And when I list this phrase in my paper, as cited in Lachman, 2015, that's the year of publication, page 57. So if I went to the work by Lachman, I would find this statement quoted from this other author. Hopefully that makes sense. Let me go over this again. So I read this person's work, Lachman. Lachman referenced this work by Miller, and it had a section in there that I wanted to quote or I wanted to, to work on. If I just cite it to Lachman, it's really not accurate because Lachman in his article is citing someone else's work. 
So I'm citing this person's work as cited in Lachman. Hopefully that makes sense. That's one of the most confusing types of in-text citations that there are. Okay, personal interviews. You conducted the interview yourself. Sometimes that's a great source of research for you, especially if you're researching something that you have a lot of personal experience about, or you live in an area where a lot of people have a lot of personal experience, or you know someone who does professionally this thing that you're writing about in your paper. It would be great if you could get a personal interview with someone. That's I think that's a great source. Check with your instructor, but I think it's great. Okay, how you do this. You don't list a citation in your references list at the end of your paper for an interview you conducted yourself because no one else can access that. You only cite the interview parenthetically in your paper like this. J. Smith, comma, personal communication, comma, and the date. This is the person who was interviewed. Okay, we don't, you list the person's first initial, then their last name. Personal communication, that's an interview I conducted, and this is the date I conducted the interview. And of course, there would be text here, text of the interview, and things the person said this would be at the end, if you're going to cite this. Okay, and this one is really confusing because you don't cite, you don't put a reference citation in for this, because no one else can access this. Assuming this is a personal interview that you conducted and you have this stored on your hard drive or on your notes, or if you recorded it on a digital recording device or something, assuming you haven't published this anywhere, no one else can access it. So there isn't that much point listing this in your references list, but you would, and you could list the person's name who you interviewed too in the, the paper, but this is how it's done. Again, check with your instructor about this, but this is how the APA manual recommends that you do this. Okay, citing two specific paragraphs, useful with web pages that don't have page numbers. A lot of web pages, or most of them, don't have any page numbers. So if you want to list something specific for where you found something on a web page, and you really want it to be specific, here's my quote here. And if it's a direct quote in a book or an article, I would always give the page number. If you want to be really accurate with a website, it came from the National Institute of Mental Health's website, Para4. That's paragraph. That's an abbreviation for paragraph four. So I would look on this website. I would find the paragraph where this quote came from, and I would list the paragraph. That's all I got for you today. There are a lot of other ways to do. There are a lot of other things you'll run into for in-text citations, but these are the most common types of citations you will run into. So hopefully, that will help you out. Uh, please ask me any questions if you have any, as always.